ان الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم وعلى علي بسبي أجمعين شهر ولا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهر محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم Did you think this was going to be in English? Okay, we'll do it in English. My name is Yusuf. Can you say Yusuf? Oh, they got it right the very first time. Mashallah, my wife still pronounces it useless. Could be a speech in peppermint. I'm not really sure about that. Anyhow, yeah, we're here and we're having a good time. Are you having a good time? Everybody having a good time? Low Akbar! Low Akbar! Aren't you happy? Oh, sorry, wrong, wrong. That was last week. How many of you enjoyed Sahib Webb's program? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. First time I've heard Sahib give a speech in, let's see, since 2002. Or 2000, yeah, 2002 we were up in New Jersey together. So all this time he's been studying over there. And look what he learned how to tell us about people using the bathroom in a masjid, mashallah. <laughs> and Sister Megan, mashallah. I didn't know she was giving speeches, you know, I've known them since uh, when we were in Columbus, Ohio. That was maybe 10 years ago. So all of these Shababs and Shababettes, mashallah. <laughs> I don't know the word, I just make it up as I go, you know. They're coming along and they're doing a great job and I'm really proud of them. And the brothers and sisters and some of them, they, when I was here some years ago, they were little guys, now they're big guys, you know, mashallah. It, it makes me feel good to see it, that action, the activity, and this excitement, enthusiasm, uh, in Arabic it's called Hamas, right? Yeah. Huh? I feel like George Bush, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what was I going to say? All right. I'm from Texas, you figured that out already, yeah? Alhamdulillah. But I didn't vote for him. <laughs> no, sir. I, I was real happy to vote for President Osama. <laughs> Obama! That... <laughs> Cut. Back up the tape. All right. Let me get that out of the way. Alhamdulillah. The praises to Allah. We have a lot of guests here. Our guests, not Muslim. Raise your hand again, real quick. Okay, there's your targets, guys, watching you as they go back to the parking lot. It is sad when we have to begin our programs out defending our right to even breathe. And in some cases, we feel like that. We feel like that uh, we're being scrutinized and looked at uh, under a magnifying glass that any mistake we make is going to be, you know, on YouTube tomorrow and maybe on the six o'clock news the next day. So, but it is good in a way for us, let's look at it at a bright side, that you and I know that we will have to answer for everything we've done on the Day of Judgment. Allah will ask us how we behaved, what we did, how we used the resources that He gave us. So this kind of in a way prepares us for that, you know. Realizing that people are looking at you, knowing that every little mistake you make, yeah, well, so what? You shouldn't be doing it. That's it. Be good. And then you know, nobody can complain, right? Well, anyhow, what I wanted to do really was just uh, play with my little game of words. I enjoy words very much. And I found that they're an excellent way to communicate. And I've been trying to use words for a very long time. I'm going to be using some tonight, as a matter of fact. And while we're doing that, we'll break it down and try to get an understanding of what we mean by what we say. And it, it is true that the way we use words can change from one decade to another. For instance, if somebody, when I was a kid, told me that they had been out all night long, you know, and surfing, and they came home with a whole lot of bites, I would assume that they went down to the water and a lot of, maybe, fishing, they got a lot of bites on the 
thing, or maybe mosquito bites. Then I would be surprised to find out, no, he's talking about, he was on the internet surfing, and the bites he's talking are B-Y-T-E-S. He's talking about the bites, like gigabytes, megabytes, huh? Terabytes. Terabytes, that's a new one, isn't it? Terabyte? Yeah, just take a bite and tear it up. I don't know. I don't know, what is this stuff? There's a lot of stuff, right? So words change, you know? When I was a kid, you were really happy. Hey, you were gay. <laughs> Let it ride. Yeah, okay, don't say nothing else. Yeah. So what I thought we should do is break it down and make it simple. A couple of words I want to talk about, I'll be done. Finished. First word is Allah. And I remember, when I was a new Muslim, Texas, a guy comes up to me, How come you don't say God like normal people? Well, why you say Allah? Why don't you say God? Be normal, boy. <laughs> Sheikh Sohaig, by the way, he's from Oklahoma. We forgive him for that. I don't know if you know about the Texas OU game. That's a big thing every fall, every October. That's a big deal. Our university against their university. But seriously, I had to reflect on that because I did grow up hearing the word God meaning the only one to worship, the one almighty, the creator, the sustainer. The one that gives life and gives death. The one that's in charge. And this is God. To somebody growing up where I grew up. And so I was the same way when I was looking at this word, Allah. Why don't you just say God like normal people? But watch the line of questioning that could come back. If a Muslim really wanted to get on your case, look what he could ask you. So you say God, you know? And you're a Christian. Yep, that's right. Well, do all the Christians say God? Way better. Well, actually, they don't. Huh? They don't. Where are all the Christians in the world? Well, most of us is over here off of Center Street and down over. No. No. Let's broaden your horizons a little bit. Let's look around the world. We got about six billion human beings walking and talking on the planet, doing this and that and the other, right? And out of those people, how many are Christian? About a fourth, roughly, give or take, about a fourth of those people are Christian. Do you know that? And do they all say God? No. 75%? No. Half? Mm -mm. Not even half. The reason I'm telling you that because the majority, the one single largest group of Christians is Catholic in the world today. And the largest majority of the Catholics in the world today don't speak English as their mother language. Did you know that? Now, they speak French, Italian, a lot of them are speaking Spanish. Some of them are speaking other languages in Europe. A lot of Catholics out there, and they're not using the word God. Go look at the translations. I challenge you to do that. All you have to do is go to any hotel or motel on the planet. And when you go into the motel room, there's a drawer right beside the bed. Open it up. What's going to be in there? The yellow pages is already gone. Somebody got that. They didn't want the Bible. They, you take it out. It's put there by the Gideon Society. Not Gide, Gideon. It's, this is somebody mentioned in the Old Testament. You open it up. Take one, two, three, four pages or something like that, you know. And you'll see that they're going to tell you about all the translations that they've made to these different various languages. The first one's the Afrikaans language. We're very similar to German language. You can look up the German language and see. 
You can look up all of the different languages. Keep reading. Keep reading. Look at all the different languages because the example they gave is out of John 3.16. What is John 3.16? Anybody know us? Raise your hand if you know. I'm not going to make you say it, but if you know what I'm talking about. You know John 3.16? Get it up there. All right. I saw more Muslims raise their hand in Christian. What happened here? What's that all about? John 3.16 in English, depending on which translation you have, says, For God so loved the world. We can stop right there and look and see. Now, when it said God in English, what did it say in Italian? What did it say in French? What did it say in Spanish? German. In Belgium. Swedish. Norwegian. Danish. Go look. Doesn't say God. Oh. But what's really interesting is number two. Right after Afrikaans language, the number two language is Arabia. So let's look and see what it says there. For Arab Christians and Arab Jews. Actually it says Ali Lam Lam Ha. Allah. It says Allah. For Christians and Jews. And if you get a Bible, you can get a Bible, it's called uh, Kitab al-Maqdis in Arabic language. And I have two of them, by the way. And you can look in there on page one, Genesis. In the translation that I have to Arabic, it has 17 verses on page one in Genesis. 17 verses. Coincidentally, the word Allah is exactly there 17 times on page one. Whoops. Err, didn't know that. Making any sense yet? No. Well, let's take it to another level. How many Muslims are there in the world? Anybody know? About one fourth, about the same, give or take, give or take. Two or three, they can't quite make up their mind what they want to do. <laughs> now, how many of those Muslims are Arabs? Huh? 90 percent? 50? 25? Do I hear 15? 15, 15, over here I got 15, do I hear 12? 12? Oh, well, that's a reverse option. Sorry about that. Uh-huh. Okay. 12%. Maximum, 88% of all the Muslims in the world, not Arabs. Not Arabs. We don't know how to ride camels. We don't. True story. So then, logically, that 88%, well, let's find out. Do they speak Arabic language? No. In fact, <laughs> after you visit Maghrib, you know, Morocco, and Egypt, you'll find out that a lot of Arabs don't speak Arabic language. <laughs> Can't believe you said that. Anyhow, the fact is, the vast majority, almost 90%, of all the Muslims on the earth, don't speak the Arabic language. True? Okay. So now, and you have Muslims from everywhere in the world here. We could take a poll, I can show you real quick. Anybody here from Egypt, raise your hand real quick. Egypt, hands up. Okay, Pakistan, hands up quickly. India, anybody from India? Here we go. Sri Lanka, anybody from Sri Lanka? Mashallah, right over here, Sri Lanka. Do I hear Indonesia? Anybody from Indonesia? Oh, we got, oh, right over here. We got Indonesia. Do we have anybody from Texas? <laughs> all right, all right. How y'all doing? Y'all take your time of going down and y'all hurry back, man. <laughs> anybody from Morocco? I can speak your language too. Couscous. But out of all of us Muslims, every single Muslim on the planet uses the word Allah. 
Now, if you consider that, one-fourth of the world's population are using this word, Allah, to represent the one only God. Plus, the Christians and Jews who are Arabs are using that word. So, now if you want to talk about who's normal. <laughs> huh? This is just to level the playing ground. I'm not trying to prove a point, I'm just trying to bring some evidence for the point that I am going to try to prove. I'm going to attempt now for, to kind of shake your mind up a little bit and show you why Muslims use the word Allah. First of all, the Quran is only in the Arabic language. As I mentioned when we started the program up, Quran is not in any other language. And it doesn't translate. We can discuss meanings all day long in other languages and we do that. As Sheikh Suhaib said, very clear. At the same time, though, if you want to know what did Allah say, you don't say He said something in the English language. In fact, the Bible itself was not revealed in the English language. There was no such thing as English even 1,000 years ago. Huh? There were no English speakers because there was no English until after the Normans invaded the Saxons in the year 1066 A.D. Uh -oh. But the Semitic languages, which are Hebrew, Aramaic, and Arabic, are sister languages, and they go back to pre-recorded history. So again, setting the tone, which one has the more credibility? And what did they say in Aramaic? How many of you heard about a movie called Passion of the Christ? Again, all the Muslims went to see it. What's this? Hmm. Is that right? That's cool. And who produced it? Oh. What's this? Why do I look so cute on TV? <laughs> Oh, this is one of the questions. Oh, this is one of the questions. Which side of the room did it come from? That's right. No, that's right. <laughs> he didn't know he was being set up. I told him to do that. <laughs> Give me five. I believe he went for it again, did you? <laughs> I'm <in love. laughs> It's actually in my style, really, to break things up because this is a very important topic. Not only do I like to keep the Muslims away, but you know, when you're giving Juma, how many times the brothers in there going, oh. <laughs> It's uh, one time in a week when they can relax and there's no noise, you know? <laughs> Later on, you ask him, how was it doing? Oh, Juma, mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. <laughs> what was it about? Uh, about 30 minutes. <laughs> so that's why I told him, when about 30 minutes goes by, let's wake everybody up again. But to come back to our subject, about the word Allah, and why Muslims are using this word Allah. As we've just demonstrated, we find that many of the people around the entire earth Touch the keypad on that. Just touch it. It should come back up. Just touch it. it doesn't like you, does it? There it goes. You can't, they can hardly see you. Well, by the way, this is a live broadcast that's going on in one of our chat rooms. It's time for a commercial, by the way. Chatislam.com. C-H-A-T-I-S-L-A-M.com. And we broadcast live programs like this every week. And it's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you any money at all, but you do have to put up with some of my lame jokes. But we do have Sheikh Salman Amri with us from UAE. We have Mutar Sabri from Columbia, South Carolina. Yusha Evans. I'm talking about these are all people who converted to Islam, by the way. Yusha Evans down in Jacksonville, Florida. And we're working on getting Suhaib Webb to join along with us and some of the others who are broadcasting on a daily basis. And we're going to be taking this to our other website called guideus.tv and you'll see there, say, Raji in Toronto, Canada. Anybody from Canada? 
Have we get one, two, any others? Canada, three? Canada? One, so long. Right. This is a little update for you, another little plug. Dr. Zachar Knight will be in Toronto, Canada for a week in July. Exciting? Peace TV coming your way. Yes, sir. Peace TV and Huda TV, by the way, are our media partners. And we have agreements. They promote what we do. We promote what they do. So that's why I'm sticking that in here right now. Now to coming back to our program, already in progress. Why do Muslims say Allah? Allah is the name that the author, if you will, of the Quran calls himself. Allah calls himself Allah in the Quran. So it is really inappropriate for me to give him any other name, isn't it? I mean, if he says, my name is so-and-so, then that's what you would call him. And for this reason, to start with, I should consider. He called himself Allah. Why don't I say Allah? And what did Mel Gibson do with Passion of the Christ? He went all the way to Syria to get the only people left on earth that still speak the Aramaic language of Jesus Christ. Peace be upon him. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, spoke what language? Aramaic. Yes or no? And those people who are left on earth that still speak his language happen to be in Syria, which is a Muslim country, and they have been protected for 1,400 years by the Muslims. That fact allows you that all these lies going on the internet are basically that, a bunch of lies. Because if Muslims were out to get Christians, it would be real easy to take. These people are, by the way, uh, to give you an idea, their lifestyle, these people are mostly farmers. If you're, are you familiar with the Amish people, the Quakers, people like that? that? These are real simple people. No weapons. If the Muslims wanted to get rid of anybody, they could go there and do it. But they have a big respect for them. They're very kind to them, and they protect them. It's evidenced by the fact that they're still there. And the fact that Mel Gibson had to go there to get the language that he used in the movie Passion of Christ. And in the movie itself, in the Aramaic language, you can hear the one who pretended to be Jesus. By the way, he got hit by lightning three times while they were shooting that. And he'd be like, isn't that a sign? I don't know. <laughs> Boom! Oh, wow! <laughs> okay! <laughs> anyway, it's true, he got hit by lightning three times. Anyhow, in the movie, you see the one playing the part of Jesus using that term, Allah. And then if you want to open up the New Testament, you can just look at it. It says Eli. Okay, in English, Eli. But actually, these are trying to pronounce words from the Aramaic language. They're trying to pronounce words from a long time ago when they did the translation. And the word, like... The word Allah, in some countries, they would say Allah. Like, for instance, Al-Bayt. I'm saying A-L-B-A-Y-T. Al-Bayt. But they'll say El-Bayt. E-L. They do that in Morocco. They use E-L when they go to English, yes or no? Yeah, or French, you use an E-L, right? So, if you said E-L, L, and then the possessive, Ownership is E at the end of something. Beiti. Bait is house. Beiti, my house. Right? Is that right? So if I say Elahi, what am I saying? Huh? My God. Elahi. Elahi. Lima sabatani. My God, my God. Why have you deserted me? And this is what we find twice in the New Testament. The very words that we're using right now are still in the English inside of the Bible that they're handing out in the motels and hotels and not just in the translation, but actually in the very text itself. And then it says in parentheses, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Allahi, Allahi. Lima sabatani. Think about it. 
Think about it. Now, Elohim. Elohim, that's Old Testament. This is Elohim. This is for God, it represents it. But they never met, pronounced the tetronomogram. They never pronounce it because it's forbidden to do that in Jewish law. You cannot do it. This is why they don't put any vowel markings on that particular word. In fact, they say they've lost the word, which means God. They say that. But yet, Elohim is what we say, only we pronounce it Elohimah. Oops. It's again the same, isn't it? And how about Yahweh? Jehovah. Jehovah's Witness. Anybody is Jehovah's Witness here? Have any Jehovah's Witness? No? They're all out and busy knocking on doors. <laughs> Good. I'm glad to see people are excited about what they believe. I have no problem with that. But by the way, Muslims don't go knocking doors. Uh, not a good idea for us. Okay. <laughs> not a good idea. Hi, I'm your local Muslim. <laughs> you have right. So, Jehovah is definitely an English pronunciation of the word. Yahawah. It's Yahawah. Without any vowels. Non-Jews added vowels and said, well, it's probably Yahovah. But it's Yahawah. Wah. Now, where does that, how come V became a Wah? Well, if you know anything, how many from Pakistan? Anybody Pakistan? Anybody know Urdu language? Anybody German? Anybody know German language? Yeah, well, in Germany is where they make the Volkswagen. That's what they call it, Volkswagen. We pronounce it Volkswagen. <laughs> it's a reversal of the letters. And it's the same exact thing when we say Jehovah, Yahweh. Now watch. Let's don't guess at what it is. Let's just look and see. It says that the translating of this, going back to the verb, the root, and the Hebrew language in Strong's Concordance of the Bible says that it's calling upon the living God. How do you call upon somebody? You go, hey, right? Hey, how do you do that in Arabic? Yah, yah, am I right or wrong? Yah, how, wah. Yah, how, How about this? Yah, al-hay. Yah, al-hay. Yah, al-hay. Yah, al-hay. What am I saying? I'm calling on the living God in Arabic language. The exact same thing, there's no difference. It's not like it is a different pronunciation, but the same meaning, the same words. Just how you twist your mouth when you say it. So I'm going to ask you again, what's the most logical word if you want to be normal? Allah. And what does Allah mean? And this is now the point that I want to try to prove, so listen carefully. The word Allah cannot be made plural, nor can it have gender. It is not plural and it's not gender. Right away somebody say, wait a minute, in the Quran it said we, us, our. Throughout the Quran Allah is saying we, us, and our. That looks like a plural to me, there's your trinity. No it isn't. That's called the royal we. Just like when a king or queen make a, any kind of a declaration or a proclamation, they say, we declare the following. It's the royal we in Arabic, just like we use the royal we in the English language. As far as gender, you say, oh, everywhere you look, it says, huwa, which means he is. Or you'll find that when it says Allah, who, which means Allah, he is. But again, it's out of respect and the majesty of Allah not to represent gender. The word Allah does not represent gender. And it is so unique. It's the proper name for the one who is so unique. There's nothing like him. Kulhu Allahu Ahad. Say he is Allah, the unique, uniquely Ahad, one. The word in Arabic for one is Wahed. But the word Ahad is from that and it means a one that no two is going to come after, you know. Well, you got one and you're never going to match it. Kind of like my socks at night. I look under the bed, I can't ever find it. Okay, but I'm not going to compare a lot of my socks. I'm just saying though, that number Ahad doesn't really have anything else like it. And Allah is uniquely one. 
So, for sure, this is the name that we use. And if you want to be a really good Christian, why don't you use the word that Jesus used? And if you don't believe me, believe Mel Gibson. <laughs> okay, next word. I told you I only had a couple words. Next word. Islam. What does Islam mean? Well, you could ask a Muslim, or you could ask some people in the media, or a politician, or a preacher. Let's go ask a preacher. Mr. Preacher, what does Islam mean? Islam means terrorism, boy. Get away from them guys. Whatever you do, don't read that book. That's exactly what my friend told me. He used to carry a big cross down the street, down the town. Yeah, that's what he told me. I'm not joking. He told me. Stay away from them boys. They're a bunch of turks. Hijackers, kidnappers, and they don't believe in God. They worship a black box in the desert, kiss ground five times, strike something. Anyhow, the word Islam, the word Islam actually doesn't have a translation. That's why if you look through the Quran, you never see this word translated. All the other words they'll try to translate. Like I said, Allah, they say God. By the way, I, I missed one part of that. How can you distinguish God, which is anything worship, G-O-D in the dictionary, anything you worship is a God, a rock, stick, stone, a bone, all of those things are worshipped. Therefore, they're all gods. Everybody's got gods, some kind of god. The ones that don't believe in that god, they believe in the money god, yeah? Right or wrong? Somebody got a god, right? So how do you distinguish any old god with the one and only god? Well, you use a big G. Huh? Hey, <laughs> You know what's wrong with that? Semitic languages don't have capital letters. And besides that, what if you start the word, the sentence with that word god? You got to put a big G. Then I don't know what you're talking about. Huh? And when you're talking to somebody, they can't see it. You know, you're talking about, well, you know, the other day I saw this guy worshiping his God. <laughs> but me, I only worship my God. <laughs> I'll be Jericho. So you can't make that distinction. So let's go back again and look. What about this word, Islam? The reason they can't translate it is because it would give away the whole secret. This is one of the best kept secrets on the planet today. What is Islam? Now let's ask the Muslims, what is Islam? Islam is peace, brother. We love everybody. We're tolerant. No problem. <laughs> Sorry, but that doesn't work either, does it? Fact is, it doesn't mean peace. Does not mean peace. If you thought it did, get a new thing going. How many Muslims? Let's put it up again. I'm just making sure you still awake. Put the other hand up. How you feel now? Is it better? <laughs> Your deodorant failed. You put it down. <laughs> All right. Anyway. <laughs> did you ever see a Muslim walk up to each other and say, Islam alaikum? No. We say salam alaikum, don't we? So Islam doesn't mean peace. Get off of it. Wake up. I mean, you know, spend a little time with the Maori, the dictionary. Open it up and look. Islam is the surrender, submission, obedience, and sincerity and peace with the law. First of all, you surrender your will to the will of Almighty God. Number two, you submit to His commandments. Number three, you obey them to the best of your ability, and then number four, you do it in sincerity and stop. Hold on. Don't move. Don't move. I see you moving over there, by the way. <laughs> Think. Sincerity. Did you not hear what Suhaib Webb was talking about? Can you force people into an intimate relationship, something where they're going to feel Good about somebody? I want you to feel good about me. I mean, now, boy! <laughs> How can you change somebody's feelings? Can you? You can try all day long, but... Hey, if you doubt what I just said, go to the divorce court and watch. It ain't happening. Think. Sincerity. If I have to be sincere to do Islam, then Islam cannot be spread by any kind of force. 
Sword or AK-47, either one. Doesn't work. You can spread ideologies. You can spread civilizations, all kinds of concepts under force. But you can never force Islam. La ikraha fid deen. There is no compulsion in the way of Islam. Allah said that in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 256. And then after that comes the word peace. And you have to be in peace with Allah. After you did the other four, be in peace with whatever comes to you. Because this life is a test for you. That's why we see that things happen in the world that we see today. The atheist says he doesn't want to believe because he sees hardship. He sees strife. He sees calamities, trials and tribulations everywhere he looks. Oh my God, tsunamis, hurricanes, tornadoes. Oh, cyclones over here. Ah, volcanoes going off over there. Whoa, must be no God. Huh? For us, it proves there's God because he said in the Quran, that's how he punishes people and tests them. 1400 years ago, he described that we would be talking about earthquakes. Zalzala, yes or no? And the Prophet ﷺ prophesied in the last day there'd be so many earthquakes, even Saudi Arabia, even the place where the Kaaba is, is going to be affected by earthquakes. That's a good place to build tall buildings, isn't it? Duh. Anyway, anyway, we here in California know a little bit about earthquakes, yes or no? And I got just down to San Diego a couple of weeks ago, just in time, didn't I? <laughs> earthquake City. One of our websites features this about earthquakes. If you want to keep up with what's really going on, there were over, I think, 1,800 earthquakes just in a few days on the planet. Most of you never even heard about it. Didn't even think about it. Went out about your business. Didn't even, didn't care. But if you want to know about them, go to islamnewsroom.com. On the left side of the page, look and it says earthquakes. Click it and keep up with it because it updates every few minutes showing you where the earthquakes are. You can see the graphics showing you where they are, how big they are, and how recent they were. Some that one hour, some 24 hours, and the others will show you the one week, up to one week. And the planet's loaded with them all the time and it increases not only in numbers but in intensity. But that's enough about that. I want to come back to our subject, Islam itself. We as Muslims understand Islam to be a way of life from the time we're born to the time we die, from the time we get up in the morning to the time we go to sleep at night. We understand Islam to be our way. It is our deen. It is what we do. And the people of the book should look at their book real close and observe that after the four Gospels, in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, this is the fifth book of the New Testament, look in there in chapter 11 and see what Paul said about the people of Jesus. The real people of Jesus never called themselves Christians. No, they didn't. They called themselves people of the way. And it's capitalized. W-A-Y. Not that they capitalized it, but the translators recognized that it was a proper noun. They were called Ahaldin. People of the way. How many in this room hope and pray that we are from the Ahuldin? So we want to be just like the early Christians, don't we? Ahuldin. Following the way. What way? The way of all of the prophets. To worship that one God I just talked about. To do what He wants us to do. On His terms. Not worshiping the prophets. Not worshiping the messengers. Putting them in a high status. Saying only good about them. Not like some people did but showing the proper honor to them, respect to those prophets, and following that way, Ahuddin. The last and the final prophet of all, Muhammad Sallallahu told us that he was bringing the same message that every other prophet brought before him and said that there will be no prophet after him. And Allah said the same thing, very clear in Surah Al-Hasab, telling us that the Prophet Sallallahu is, is, not the father of any of your men, but he is the Khatam al -Ambiya. He's the seal of all of the prophets. So for us, we understand that he just came as a man, lived as a man, died as a man, and told us that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, would be back in the last day, even we know he's going to be in Syria. Is that a coincidence that the only people left on this earth that speak the language of Jesus are still right there in Syria? Ha! Huh? Or did we stack the deck? Made a deal with Mel Gibson or something? Think about it. 
Before you criticize Islam, you better look real hard. Because go back to your Bible and read twice in the New Testament when, according to what you got in the English language, it tells you a prayer called the Lord's Prayer. When you pray, pray thus. The only word we got a problem with is Father. We don't say Father. We say God. We say Lord. But we don't compare our relationship with Allah to a father much greater than that. Because that would be leaving out the mother, wouldn't it? And who did all the work? The mother. Stop and think about it. We're giving the credit to the one that Jesus prayed to. Did Jesus pray? And if he did, who did he pray to? And when you pray to him, what is that all about? And if you say he's God, he never said that. Not in any of the most corrupt translation of any Bible I ever saw did it ever really say that. You've got to take something that's said and then try to fit it around. That. Don't you, you know, when you read, don't let the Holy Ghost tell you what, what the beliefs are. Uh-huh. I went through all that. But to come back to this subject, the Lord's Prayer tells us, and we will accept it as Muslims in meaning at least, with that one change. I'm going to say, O oh, Father, but we'll say, O oh, God, which art in heaven. We believe that. Thuma astawa ala arsh. We believe that. Hallowed be thy name. We know Allah's names are all sacred. We defend that. His asma was the father. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. That's what Islam means. Do God's will on earth. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our rizq. Our daily bread. Nobody else can give it to us but Allah. We believe that. He's all up. And forgive us our sins. And we forgive those who sin against us. This is the way of a Muslim. Don't lead us into temptation. Deliver us from evil. A'udhu Billah. We say it all the time. A'udhu Billah before we read the Quran. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Forever and ever. And I'm going to say, Amin, because that's the way we say it. Amin. May Allah wake us up and guide us to see what is right and what is wrong. The first of our speakers talked to the Muslims directly about what's wrong with us and what we need to do to correct it. Our sister talked to us about what is right about real love and what it means and how we put it into practice in this world. And I'm talking to you as... Human beings, all descendants of Adam, one person, we all came here. As we said in the beginning from the Quran itself. And Allah is telling us, and I'll remind you, in chapter 49, when Allah is telling us that He brought us all from one single person. From that one person, the one that He brought His mate from, is still one person, Adam and Eve, and from them created many tribes and many nations and made them different. Allah said He made us different. So we could recognize each other. But the most beloved to Allah, the most honorable in the sight of Allah, is the one who him, submits to Him, obeys Him, is sincere with Him, and at peace whatever Allah gives them. And that's called Islam. Think about it. And I'll leave you as I greeted you in the beginning and ask that Allah bestow upon you the very best of this life and the best of the next life. This is my prayer for all of us. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. Salaam alaikum, you're still here. I didn't bore you to death yet. I'm back. Now, by the way, we got to the point where we do the question and answers. And you look like a pretty progressive group out here. You, got, you guys are pretty modern, aren't you? Huh? You're modern, right? You're not old-fashioned, right? Anybody here is not old? Is anybody old-fashioned here? Huh? Anybody? Get out of here. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do it a little bit different. What we're going to do, you see, I'm going to ask you the questions. You're going to give me the answers, okay? First question. Yeah. If a hen and a half lay an egg and a half in a day and a half, how long does it take a rooster to lay a hard-boiled egg on a brass doorknob? Eh, wrong answer. You should have phoned a friend. You don't like that game. Okay. 
Okay, I got another game. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll do it this way. You see what you do? Give me the answer. Just give me the answer. I'll guess what the question is. If I'm right, I win a trip to the Bahamas. No, they do it on Jeopardy. Come on, guys. I thought you're modern here. What's going on? Okay, here's one. I love it. I love it when people listen to half of what I said. Uh, no, I'm serious. I really do. Because that means you're just like my kids. It said, if God slash Allah has no gender, why is he only referred to as he, even in the Arabic language? Why isn't he referred to as she and he to confirm that he has no gender? Don't hold your, your hand. Don't, don't admit that you did that, okay? <laughs> I know you didn't hear the part where I said that this is based on the linguistic style of the language of Arabic, that it is the royal status, and it works that way. Now, I didn't invent the language, nor did I invent the Quran, okay? But we understand, we understand that that is how it is. The same way for the plural, okay? It says we, our, and us throughout the Quran. But guess what it does do? It gives a good test to those who really want to believe something wrong with the Quran. If they really want to be disbelievers in the Quran, Allah is giving you a chance. Go ahead, be a disbeliever. Especially with the we, our, and us. Oh, man, I see Trinity. Oh, okay. See what you want to see. Many people do. It's okay. But thanks for the question. You're asking about introducing Islam to non-Muslim neighbors and friends without offending them? <laughs> Lots of luck. If you find out, let me know. I'll be really interested in that one. But we'll tell you what the Prophet Sallallahu used to do. He used to bring it just like it was, but in the nicest, kindest way. But he never watered it down. He never came up with these weird excuses and some kind of, you know, stuff that people say today. And I look at him and I go, are you sure you're a Muslim? Where did you get this stuff from? You don't apologize. If you don't want to talk about it, go home and shut up. But don't come out here and start making up stuff about Islam. This is very dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. Allah can dump you if you do that kind of stuff. And you'll be as misguided as anybody else on the planet. If you don't know what's Islam, you say, I don't know. A lot of stuff I don't know. I get questions like that all the time. Why do you think I made you write them down? I throw them away. You didn't know I didn't know the answer. Mm hmm. He said, What inspired me to be a Muslim? I'll tell you one thing. I was not looking for a new religion. I was trying to convert Muslims to become Christians. <laughs> he said, What attracted you to Islam? Absolutely nothing. No, there was nothing about Islam attracted to me. I was brainwashed and brain dead. All I had was one thing. I got to convert people to my way. I used to go to Mexico with another friend of mine. We go to Mexico to convert Christians to Christianity. <laughs> we did. We'd go down and tell the Catholics, you're not saved. You didn't know Jesus. They got a big statue of him up there. What are you talking about? He said, how do you feel about it now? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Nashkur Allah, shukr Allah. I love it. I love every bit of it. What happened though, this long story, is so long, I can't do it now. I want to tell you where to find it. My name, you have to know how to spell my name correctly. I don't know, very seldom people get it right, so I'm going to tell you. Simple five letters. Y U S U F. Then my last name is Estes, E S T E S. Got it? Dot com. You get the whole story there. Got it? All right. Then you get the whole thing and you find out what really happened and how that a Catholic priest who was a friend of mine, lived with us, my father, Protestant minister, myself, my wife, our family, how we got to Islam. Each of us on our own way and a different story. A weird story when you read it, you'd be like, huh? But it really happened. Alhamdulillah. How many of you already heard about that story? Anybody? I have the audience. Oh. I'm not going to fool you guys, all right. Something about the recent South something issue. South Pacific? I just want you to say it. <laughs> huh? 
How many Muslims knew about that South Park issue? Raise your hand. Really? Stop for a little while. What are you doing watching that crowd? I'm going to call this new love police on you. It said that the rest of my family can work this time. Go read the story. Somebody said he's proud to be a redneck Muslim. Hee-haw! All right. Good for you. People say that's wrong. How can I keep who I am and still be a Muslim? Look, anybody who knows there's only one God and there's no partnership. That's not meaning you believe in one trinity, okay? One God, no partners. If you believe the first commandment in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, the book of Deuteronomy, it's listed twice. It said, I'm the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt and the house of bondage. You know no God besides me. And then it says, thou shalt not have any other gods beside me. Second one, don't make any images of anything of God, of anything that walks on the earth, creeps on the earth. Actually, it says, creeps on the earth, swims in the sea beneath, or flies in the air above. I'm sitting in the front row of a church. Looking up at the pastor, standing there at the pulpit, we call it the minbar. And I'm reading this. Got the Bible open, I'm reading that. No creepy thing, nothing walking on the earth, nothing swimming in the sea beneath, and no flying thing. Now while I'm sitting there, I'm looking, right behind him over on this side over here, there's a big cross with a man on it. Somebody that walked on the earth. I went, whoa! And then on the front of the pulpit right here is a fish. Huh? I will make you fishers of men. A lot of them are using that fishing emblem that they put on there. Huh? And the stained glass window up top, you got the dove with the olive branch. I said they didn't miss a thing. Huh? But if you really believe in those commandments and you're keeping those commandments, you're believing that Muhammad is a prophet, not a God, not a son of God, a prophet who said the same thing. And you're trying your best. You might be a Muslim and you didn't even know it. Well, it's not about your clothes. It's not about your skin color. It's not about your language. It's all about this one thing. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, there is a morsel of flesh inside of a human being that if it is good, then the whole of the matter of it is good. But if it is bad, then the whole of the matter is rotten. And that morsel of flesh is the heart. If your heart is for Almighty God, and He knows that, then who am I to criticize you or anybody else? We are not the judges of each other. Allah didn't put us here to judge each other. In fact, Allah says, Alay salahu bi al hakimin. Is not Allah the best of judges? So we'll leave it for Allah to judge who's who. But until we can be together again in this life for something good, or in front of him on the day of judgment, I'll leave you as I greeted you in the beginning. Peace. Assalamu alaikum.